Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Brown from 8 Star Anime, and as you can see, I got no Dave, I got no Roger, no guests this week, uh, mainly the fact that uh, scheduling is an issue, uh, it tends to happen, however, uh, we plan on giving you your weekly dose of anime, so that's what we plan, to, that's what I plan to do. So this week, uh, we're implementing something a little differently in 8 Star Anime, where instead of doing our bit by bit, few episodes at a time, tell you about them, and then rate them, we decided if we're going to do this one-on-one uh, -on -one basis per se, if you want to put it that way, uh, it's going to be more of a binge. So ladies and gentlemen, officially now, it is 8 Star Binge. And if our executive producer would like to put a little fanfare, that'd be nice. Up to him. And, uh... <laughs> so, at this point, I decided to go ahead and browse through Crunchyroll's, uh... Fairly extensive library. To see what was on there, and I came across... Something that seemed probably the most awkward... One of the most awkward things I've seen in a while. Uh, came out in 2005. Um, called Koi Koi 7. And, um, this series really is based about a group of six girls, aptly named Koi Koi Seven, who are there to protect their school, and a boy, uh, our main protagonist, named Tetsuru Tanaka. Um, Tetsuro literally is the only boy in an all-girls school. Kind of odd. Uh, the only reason he's there is because, well, he needs protection as well as, you know, whatever. Uh, they don't really go too much detail about that as much the entire series. It's kind of funny. Um, at which he runs into a girl named uh, Yoyoya Asuka, who is actually part of the Koi Koi 7, and she remembers who... He is, as a kid, I guess, have been childhood friends for so long, but he doesn't remember. Kind of a cliche bit for most harem anime, his childhood friend and all that jazz. And... She's just in love with him. She wants to protect him. Though she gets easily distracted by crab bread and, you know, many other things. Kind of a ter terrible, terrible bodyguard. Um, along with the other five girls in, in the group, uh, each one of them is actually a cyborg of sorts who each have different abilities um, and different talents. Uh, one of them literally just pulls guns out of nowhere. Like, literally, she just has guns for days. Uh, another one is just able to properly fly. Uh, another one has super strength. Another one is pretty much the high-tech girl. Um, all sorts of them. And their job, literally, is just a... Uh, Go to school, protect Tetsuro, and move on with life. Pretty simple storyline. Uh, there is the student council group, aptly named the Goko Five, and they are a hilarious group. Uh, led by Mia, who happens to be the grandchild of the headmaster of the school, she believes that the Koi Koi Seven are literally the worst thing for this school. So, literally when you watch episode 1 and Tetra is on his way to school, uh, there, these girls are literally getting chased by the Goku 5 in battle helicopters and tanks and giant mechs and, and you're, this series is just random. It's fantastic for that reason. Um, and so, throughout the entire series, it's more of your typical harem anime. Uh, lots of fan service. Uh, awkward moments. But they play it up in more of a gag fashion than they really do uh, any form of romance or anything of that nature. It's more of a gag series, really. Lots of random funny bits, whatnot, yada yada, just to kind of get a laugh out of you. Um, with that said... Uh, Things do kind of take a turn for 
more serious as we have a, a uh, another cyborg who's in the background called uh, uh shoot <laughs> so no, uh Salonius 28 is what she's called and she herself also goes by the name when asked Gary Asuka why because she originally was not a robot of any type of sort she was actually AI who was actually watching over the two when they were growing up she feels that she is just Yoyo's shadow she feels that she is the same person and she feels that she needs the same love that she's been getting that uh, the original Yoyo has been getting um, she makes an appearance takes out the uh, Koi Koi 7 with relative ease until uh, Tetsuro comes in and says, hey, you know, this is to stop. You know, calm down, you know, we can solve this normally. She kind of breaks down, gets taken out, and ends up joining Koi Koi 7. So now you have seven ladies who are there to be with Tetsuro. Thus, Koi Koi 7 actually makes more sense now. <laughs> um, now I'm just being brief I don't want to spoil anything in case y'all want to watch anything so I'm being very vague about my explanation uh, just to give you an idea of what the series is kind of about um, like I said the entire series is nothing but laughs, kicks, awkward moments just your typical harem story not much to really tell for you um but if I had to rate this thing, let's get to it. Um, start with the visuals. Uh, this is back in 2005. This is right at the time where they're still not doing HD um, animation and stuff like that. So the animation quality still looks like it's back in the 90s. Uh, Doesn't really take much away from the series itself, of the way the series is, but um, at a time where we're starting to get a lot more high quality anime, slowly building up that direction, seeing the old school way kind of, yeah. So, but I can't really fault it. It's, it's, they're still doing the transition from going from their standard animation to their high quality stuff that we now see today in anime. Um, so, I have to give it a 1 in that regards. Uh, can't really take anything away from that. Uh, sound effects, uh, the audio. Uh, to be honest, I have to give it a 1 as well. It's, hmm, I don't want to explain this one. It does its job. I guess we'll have to go with our standard 8-star anime one answer <laughs> uh, because sound effects are where it's at. I mean there's tons of explosions mechs get made you know they do the combined like their Power Ranger type deal and uh, pretty funny pretty hilarious but nothing stands out the music in the background doesn't really pop for them or anything of that nature unless they're doing something stupid but you know hey that's, that's kind of the nature of the beast of this type of series um, in terms of story um, I kind of touched the story slightly, though the fact that there are most of the episodes, there really isn't any other than just regular, everyday awkward moments for the series. Um, the little story that they did put into it, uh, for the anime purposes, I don't know how the manga goes, is literally, um, almost non-existent. I mean, they kind of put something in it to kind of change the pace a little bit, or the quickly add in a character after it's said and done. Um, if there's any major story through this whole series as to why Tetsuro is actually at this school to begin with, it's because um, his father is uh, literally, I guess, the bad guy in the story? Kind of? Uh, due to the fact that his research could literally be detrimental, I guess, to the world and mankind in general. Uh, they don't really explain why, they just know that it will, and they try to stop him. Uh, still doesn't quite explain why Tetra was at that school per se, 
though I think they do explain at one point, if I can remember, uh, Tetra, I guess, is a part of the final experiment and what goes on, along with yo yo as well. So, uh, it's, it's a little complicated, a little jumbled up towards the end there. They don't really explain too much. And I think that's part of the reason why the story is kind of crap in that instance. So, I literally have to give it a zero. Now, I would give it a one if they just kept it where there was no story. It was just a gag harem thing where it's, you know, Tetsuro with all these ladies, yada yada, you know, typical harem BS. I would have been like, well, heck, it gets a one, it does what it's doing, it, there's no story, yada yada. But when they're trying to implement something and don't really execute it well... And something that obviously is um, made to be just funny and gag and whatnot. It kind of ruins it for me a bit. It's like, because what's the point if you're not really going to make it flourish? So definitely zero in that regards. Overall enjoyment. Uh, I'm a fan of the harem BS. Because I think it's funny how the main character always seems to be in awkward positions even though most of the time our main character is competent enough to stay out of them. Um, in this case this is one of those where the main character is fairly competent to stay out of trouble. Just still finds himself in trouble constantly. Uh, due to the fact that the uh, Goku 7, uh, excuse me, Goku 5 is always on their tail trying to get him kicked out of school and the Koi Koi 7 are just there just trying to live life. It's just the way it is. Um, I'll have to, for that regards, I'll give it a two. Um, I'm a sucker for those type of series, I always have been, because I've always liked that type of comedy, because I think it's funny how awkward things get. Uh, this is a star anime, for that matter. So, um, overall, I give this series a four. Um, kind of on the low end, only for the sheer fact that this is a series that just, was, it just exists, in my opinion. Uh, so, it is what it is, it's the nature of the beast, hey, we've seen better, we've seen worse, um, if you ask Dave, uh, Dragon Ball Z is always at the bottom for him, so, <laughs> uh, with that said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's, da that's, uh, 8 Star Binge, uh, watching all of 13 episodes of Koi Koi 7, giving you a quick rundown, uh, I hope you enjoyed. We're planning on probably doing maybe a few more of these. Probably some with Dave. Um, and, you know, we look forward to you guys' support. If you have any suggestions on animes uh, you would like us to see, uh, always comment at the YouTube channel on the ECS Network or uh, A Star Facebook page, as well as checking out all the other ECS Network shows, such as Chop Socket Cinema with. Uh, Josh Crawford and William Harrison. Also check out Densicaster with our main executive producer, uh, Michael Brown. We also have, you know, the booking office, as well as uh, the Densi Blitz, Rage Crip Radio with Joe. Uh, great amount of shows through all genres of nerdism. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chris Brown. This is the ASR Binge. We'll see you real soon.